So over the past two months, I have not been shy in sharing with you that the best BMW that BMW currently makes is the M2 CS, preferably with a manual transmission, but in either case, it is so good, I added it to my list of cars that I would personally write a check for. Now, high praise, yet it does present one challenge. Where does that leave the car that is arguably the most iconic vehicle that BMW has ever produced in its history? Now, one answer to that question could be more power to differing parts of the vehicle. That would start with the basic building block that is called the BMW S58. Translated to something you and I could understand, a three liter inline turbocharged six cylinder engine that is an offer in two different outputs. There is an M3 core model that is 473 horsepower and 406 pound feet of torque. Then there is this, the competition. This is on offer with 503 horsepower and 479 pound feet of torque. Then we get to some confusion. In the basic core model, that can be had with a manual transmission, something we like. However, in the more powerful competition model that is only on offer with an automatic. Then further confusion is where all that power goes. Uh, the one behind us is rear wheel drive. We like that. However, if I'm getting my BMW history correct, this will be the first generation of BMW M3 that will be on offer with an all wheel drive system. They tell me that it's somewhere around this summer this will happen. That would translate to some performance figures, at least for the rear wheel drive. Now, uh, zero to 60 in that core model, 4.1 seconds. Zero to 60 for the car behind us, 3.7 seconds. Then there's the VMAX, 155 miles an hour. Okay, so here we go, 3,890 pounds, or depending on how you express your weights and measures, 1,764 kilograms. A rather important aspect we do need to discuss. If this were a standard M3 with a manual transmission, it would be 50 pounds lighter. With that, oh yes, turns on about 2,000 RPM. The tires squirreled a little bit there. Then there is a rush of power. It comes on around 3,000 RPM, pulls all the way up to about 5,500 RPM. This. I gotta say, the minute you get in this thing, you realize this is a completely different M3. It delivers power in a different way. It's just, the only way to describe it, it's a crazy fast car, where the previous M3 was a quick car, it just didn't feel this fast. Can't honestly put my finger on what it is, whether it's the transmission or the actual engine itself, probably a combination of both. Uh, remember, this is the eight-speed ZF torque converter we've driven in many other BMWs. For some reason, it works better in BMWs. You and I finally had the opportunity to drive it on the Jaguar, and you really didn't want a manual shift in the Jaguar. Here, it works pretty well. There are good shifts, but they're not exactly fully mechanical in nature that you would get from a dual clutch like we've driven in an M2 CS. It's a different personality of transmission. God, that thing sounds magnificent. I can't honestly tell you if it's piped in noise or real. Now, I'm going to say something rather controversial here. I think this is attractive. I know most of you do not agree with me about this whole front end of this vehicle, but moving from the honeycomb grill of the M440 to the horizontal slats in the front makes this look a little bit more menacing, but it isn't just that. It's a combination of some of the changes in the front, but arguably the most important part are the fender flares. And I need to put something out there, the wide body charger. I love the idea of it, but all they did, if we're honest, is just stick on some fender flares onto a regular charger. That is exactly what makes this unique and attractive. If you look at the fenders in the front and the rear three quarters of the vehicle, this isn't just tacked on fenders. It's completely reshaped fenders, which go a long way to making this, which was just handsome as a regular M340, to now something that is, I can't believe how cool that thing looks when you see it going down the street. And that's putting aside some of the details that are almost 
too purposeful. Like the roof, it's got the carbon fiber reinforced polymer panel. Now I can't honestly tell you there's an aerodynamic benefit or feature. However, when you look into some of the finer exterior details, looking beyond the body panels themselves, rather the bits that work in conjunction with the body panels, you start to see where they're going here. And another example would be the ducting to the front air dam to feed the front brakes. Or in the rear, you look at the way the body is sculpted around the rear wheel, but specifically jets out right before the rear door. Now one would look at this and initially say, well, it's a modern interpretation of an E30 M3, and that would be incorrect. Rather, this is far more important. It's a completely different design direction for BMW. So driving dynamics picks up with that M340 left off. We drove that one about a year and a half ago on a track. Biggest thing we took from that is there's a longer wheelbase, which did impact the driving dynamics. Here, they've changed a couple of things. Up front, uh, double joint wishbones in the rear, multi-link. One big change they made, they increased the front track. It's 1.5 inches wider, which does make a difference in the stability of the vehicle. This is something that I feel confident pushing a bit harder. There's good control over pitch, squat, dive, and roll. Yeah, that has a lot to do with the suspension system that they've changed obviously the dampers are different in this from an M340i then they do have that uh, electronic limited slip differential on the back they call it the M E diff or M diff whatever it is let's just call it a really fast electronic limited slip differential it does a really good job of transferring torque from side to side and you notice it more here than you did in that M440i because that car was all-wheel drive this thing it really is so much fun to drive, which I wouldn't expect from now a larger sedan. Yeah, it's an M3, but it's a larger sedan. I would say this is probably mid-size sedan era from like back in the 80s, 90s. Now it's entirely possible you were looking at the screen right about now saying, wait a minute, you just said the car is bigger. Doesn't that mean it's a bad thing? Well, not exactly. Remember that longer wheelbase that does help us in terms of driving dynamics. But they borrowed a page out of that X5M we drove what last summer. Additional bracing, and there is a lot of it here. Uh, underneath the hood, there's a significant, uh, most I've ever seen underneath the hood of a BMW. Then they've got that shearing plate underneath the front subframe. And if that's not enough, they added more bracing underneath the rear subframe. And then you combine that with the traction control system. Um, I, I gotta be honest with you. I, I don't know if I'm really looking forward to an all-wheel drive version of this because I love the way this feels. This has probably the longest leash in terms of a stability system that is still active that's keeping you from launching your car over to that canyon over there, but still lets you have a little bit of fun to get the tail out just a little bit, which would enable most folks with good car control experience the ability to transport this bad daddy home in one piece, shiny side up. That said, it's a huge function of the brakes. Now, if this were a bone stock M3 competition, it would have the M compound steel rotors, which is 380 mils in the front, 370 in the rear. However, this one has virtually every single option. So it has the carbon ceramic rotor really good stopping power, direct, I'd say good feedback, pedal modulation. I can't honestly tell you there's a huge difference in that department from other BMWs. I gotta say the M compound brakes, one of the better standard brake options in like performance German cars. Now one could persuasively counter that argument with the fact that this at 4,000 pounds, almost 4,000 pounds, for an M3, carbon ceramic rotors would be a prudent investment, especially when one, <laughs> this thing is so much fun, especially when one is trying to get this level of adhesion or this level of speed from something this size. Yes, it is indeed that time again to play your favorite game, Mind the Absence Game, with today's contestant, arguably one of the most important cars on the planet. No joke. This one, the 2021 BMW M34, a base price of $69,900. To that, we had the color, and here I had a choice. Could have had a yellow one or this, which is frozen Portimao blue. You can kind of see where they're getting the names for the color. 
This looks kind of like a purple in some lights, kind of like a deep blue in other lights. I really do like it, especially with the two-tone interior. And you really gotta like it because it's not cheap. $3,600. Uh, then something to add to that fancy paint is the executive package. That adds things like the LED headlights, the heated steering wheel, the Qi wireless charger. I don't know why that's optional on a $70,000 car. The gesture control, the power trunk, and then most importantly, the head-up display, $3,000. Then while we're talking about some of the stuff adding to a fancy car, we probably need another drive mode, so we do want the M-Drive professional mode, $900. Uh, then, if you're going to have the car go faster, you probably need better brakes. Carbon ceramic rotors, $8,150. And you know how we talk about the AMG Night Package, the dark trim and all those AMGs? BMW calls that the BMW Individual Shadow Line Trim. And here, I do not think it was a good choice with this color, because I would love to see like a satin chrome finish around the daylight opening would really work with the color of this vehicle, even though that option is only $300. Uh, then we press on to one of the more unique options of this vehicle. And here, we have to talk a little bit like behind the scenes, inside baseball of the car world. I don't care who it is, BMW, Mercedes, General Motors, they generally do not design, engineer, and build the seats in the cars. That's usually farmed out to a supplier, even the manufacturer. Not the case here. These seats were designed, engineered, and are built in-house by BMW. You'll notice the exterior of some of the bolsters as well as the back of the seat is carbon fiber, and they build that in the same factory they build the car, and most importantly, they build those seats by hand. And that's actually not the only part of the car that's built by hand, the hood and some of the other body panels. So somewhat unique in the way they're screwing this M3 together, and it better be unique, because those seats, they ain't cheap, $3,800. Then while we're on the topic of carbon fiber, if you want carbon fiber trim on the dash, as well as not just the steering wheel, but the controls for like, the radio and cruise control, the surround of that, that's carbon fiber, $950. Then if that's not enough carbon fiber for you, how about the carbon fiber exterior package? That's partly in the air dam, the mirror housings, and the diffuser, $4,700. Then arguably one of the most important options on this vehicle, and that is the M Drivers Package. That's a coupon for you to get into the BMW Performance School in either Thermal, California or Spartanburg, South Carolina. But more importantly, it raises the VMAX of the vehicle to 180 miles an hour. Then last but not least is the most important option to this vehicle, and that's the Competition Package. That raises the output of the engine and some other stuff. But one of the details that I love, it changes the seat belt. So it changes the colors. The M colors go on the seatbelt, all four or five seatbelts. So I would say it's worth $2,900. And the only other thing we add is the destination and handling von Minzen Deutschland. Yes, this is now made in the same factory that they built the original BMW M3. So it's kind of like coming home again in addition to making some of those parts by hand, that would be $995 for a total retail price of $104,245. So it's that time again for me to let a little design nerd fall out of my pocket. This time, two aspects about the interiors. First, the paddles. Uh, you guys know I am not a fan of carbon fiber. I like me some wood, even in cars like this. However, the paddles are carbon fiber, not aluminum, but it's not so much the material or the tactile feel about the paddles, it's the size of the paddles. They're like almost old school R35 GTR paddles. Now granted, they're not attached to the right place. I would much prefer to have these huge shifter paddles attached to the steering column, not the steering wheel, but this is a very nice compromise. And then the detail that has been smack dab in front of your face the entire episode, the seats. 
I'm going to go out on a limb here and follow these under the heading of polarizing. And no, it's not just because there is an unusual amount of bolstering. Rather, there is bolstering in places you wouldn't expect it. You see there's the usual bolstering seat back, seat bottom. However, there's also bolstering between your legs. I wouldn't call it strangely arousing. I would just call it odd. I personally love the seats in the car. They are crazy stiff. There is not a lot of padding here, and that's why I think they're polarizing. People might not like all the bolstering and definitely wouldn't like the thin amount of padding. But for the purpose of this vehicle, these seats, magnificent. And I think these are the seats that are going to go in the M5 CS, which has four of them, not two of them. Going back to where we kick things off, where does this all leave us? Apparently in a very different place. You see, the space that this used to occupy is now the residence of the BMW M2 CS, and by extension, the BMW M2 competition. This is no longer a BMW M3. Rather, it's, yes, faster. It is larger. That's probably the biggest change. And arguably, it's sharper which one would say, how could it be bigger and still sharper at the same time? And this is where we have to move to like a spectrum. If a BMW drives like over here and a Porsche drives over here, this on that spectrum, if Porsche were to make a sports sedan size vehicle like this, it would be closer to the Porsche. That is why it's sharper. And that is why it's no longer a BMW M3 as in the olden times of BMW M3s. Which brings us to the wish list. And here, please, oh, please, oh, please, why does one have to choose more power or manual transmission? Why can't we have a two-wheel drive, 500 horsepower, manual transmission M3? That would be wunderbar. And then let's be honest with one another. I know many of you are about this carbon fiber roof and you don't like weight high in the vehicle to raise the center of gravity. But let's be honest, this goes on a track maybe 5% of its life. That's if it goes on a track at all. Most of them are cars you commute in, maybe take the kids for ice cream, maybe drive it three times a week. The sunroof would be a better choice. So if we could fix that, at least make it an option, that would be great. And this is the point of the episode where I turn this around to you guys to opine in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV, all one word, Moto Man TV, all one word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I still firmly believe that the best BMW that BMW currently makes is the BMW M2 CS with a manual transmission. But this way exceeded expectations. Until I see you next time, bis später.